Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Yahoo! Here we are again, yeah. Growing in Grace. We're having a rocking good time. Yeah, it's a party. It's like a podcast party. We're glad you're with us. How you doing, Joel? Hey, man. I brought the party favors. I brought the uh, those things that... You know, you blow them and they make a noise, but mine's broke. <laughs> so I just got to make it make it up. It's a big old grace party going on here. That's what that's what it should be. I mean, church should be that way. Really, like people talk about it sometimes, but I'm not sure anybody ever really lives up to it. Yeah, you know, I I um I grew up in uh, kind of a well, I guess it's the theology of the church that I grew up in is very liberal, but the um. But yeah, the people are very reserved, and so um, you know, if someone would get up and and sing a song, it, no one ever clapped. No one ever. It was just uh, you know, someone got done singing a song, and everyone's quiet until the pastor gets back to the pulpit. And uh, anyway, my mom had gone to had had gone to seminary, and she was having a uh, kind of a, a service, uh, her ordination service. And anyway, I sang a song during there, and she had had a, a teacher who was, you could tell that she was against this whole thing about being reserved in a church. And so I got done singing, everyone's quiet, and all of a sudden she just starts clapping, and then everybody starts clapping, and she's like, this is, you know, this is how it should be. The body of Christ, when we spend time together, it's not meant to be a just a, uh, you know, where we're all just feeling we need to be quiet and reserved we're in the house of god so it's we it's really the place where we should be who we are and you know i'm not the most i'm not the most rowdy person in the world i can be rowdy if i'm with the right people but but you know what uh we should bring out the uh the real selves in each of us when we're together as the body of christ rather than making it this thing where we have to be hush hush about everything yeah, and, you know, uh, there's just something sometimes about, I don't know what it is, but there's something sometimes about the atmosphere at church that uh, it just makes you sleepy. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. I guess if you're having insomnia problems, maybe that's where you should be hanging out. I don't know. <laughs> well, God never sleeps and he never slumbers, but maybe we should, I guess, in church. <laughs> yeah. We should do that yeah, for feel, him. I feel like slumbering. <laughs> Well, That's I a feel word like, I don't use too much. I feel like hey, talking I'm, more about sin this week, Cap. Sin. Okay. Let's talk about sin. You know, Joel, uh, I can't remember if I shared this story on a recent podcast, but we were in downtown Minneapolis recently, my wife and I. Well, it was last fall, uh, which uh, by this recording would be about six or eight months ago. But there was a guy, you know, old soapbox preacher there and, and a couple guys with him. But he just stood up in the middle of downtown, not necessarily the nice part of downtown. So I admired him for that, but uh, he was just, he was on top of, literally on top of a box, telling people how bad they were. Wow. And, 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 you know, trying to preach at them that they need to you know, basically repent and get their life right and, you know, that they're a bunch of heathens. And, and it was, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine very many people walking by. And you stood there thinking, at full attention, didn't you? What's He's, that? You stood there at full attention. He's talking to me. <laughs> well, of course, I, like everybody else, I was just walking by. Of course, I had knowledge of good news. Perhaps a lot of other people did not. And they sure weren't hearing it there from the soapbox either. Because what were they hearing? All they were hearing, Joel, was how bad they were. Mm -hmm. You know, And I don't think that's really what most people want to hear. It's not so much about how bad we are. It's about how good he is. God is the one who, who dealt with the sin problem. And, by the way, it has been dealt with. It's not being dealt with. It was already taken care of. It is finished. Mm -hmm. Yet, there are many today who would still suggest that sin will bring curses into your life, like what we saw perhaps a lot in the book of Deuteronomy. Um, and yet, if, uh, if your life is right with God, quote, right with God, and, and you're um, living the way you should be or, you know, being obedient to him, whatever that means, then blessings will come to you. You got any thoughts on that? You know, there's all kinds of things that come to mind. And 
and I, you know, the, the talking about sin, for some reason, that's what many, many people in the church think that that's what we're supposed to talk about all the time. That's what life in Christ is about. It's about sin management. It's about overcoming sin. It's about talking about sin, making sure we're not sinning. And when we do, making sure that we confess it and making, <laughs> making sure that we make amends for it and all that. And there's this obsession with sin, and it really does kind of blow the mind because, like you said, it's already been dealt with. It's it's already been dealt with. And so, I mean, something else, something that came to mind when you were talking there about sin, you know, I get asked this question every once in a while. The Bible says that God will visit uh, the people's sins to the third and fourth generation. And, you know, they asked me about that, and I'm thinking, my goodness, when are we ever going to understand that sin was dealt with? You know, my uh, grandpa, he was involved in such and such a thing. Is that going to affect me and my life? Um, and I don't mean to make fun of them or, or really to make light of their questions, because it's a, it's a good question based upon the fact that many people are brought up again in the church thinking that it's all about sin and, and managing sin and sin, and not to mention sin and sin and sin, but... No, there's there's no generational curse because, not because I've taken care of sin, not because my dad or my grandfather put an end to it, but because Christ did it. He finished the work that he was sent to do. It's the finished work of the cross, and on the cross, our sin was nailed forever and ever and ever. The old us, the old person that we were uh, in Adam, died right there and is gone forever and we are now a new creation uh, there's no reason for god to punish us for our sin to curse us for our sin or anything like that because it's already been dealt with on the other side of that coin there's no reason for god to pour blessings into our lives because of what we do anymore because the the, the law was that too it wasn't just trying to avoid sin it was if you if you followed the law, if you obeyed the law and diligently followed it, then blessings would come to you. We've also been released from that bondage. And I would go so far as to say, as, as, as uh, one other preacher said, God has stopped giving since the finished work of Christ, since the, the completion of, of that work at the cross. He stopped giving because everything through that work has been provided, dealt with, taken care of. And so you don't have to worry about the curse of sin getting in the way of your relationship with God or uh, getting in the way of, of blessings from God because they are not contingent upon our performance and uh, how well we live, the blessings of God. I, I, I think of a verse, Joel, in, in Second Corinthians where Paul wrote and said, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. They're given freely, the good things from God, and God is a God does provide us with, with good things, good and perfect gifts. They're freely given. I mean, I don't know what your definition of freely is, but mine would be freely. <laughs> That's a good definition of that word. I'll have to remember. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> freely. Defined as freely. But yeah, that's right. I mean, I know you're just... Uh being silly to make a point, and it's it, it, the, the definition of freely is freely. He has freely given us all things, and and that word given, he has already given us all things. Again, whether it's our disobedience or our obedience, whether it's our good works or our bad works, none of those had anything to do with us being right with God. It wasn't our obedience it, well, it, our sin, you know, God himself took care of the problem. We can't say that enough. God himself, through the cross, took care of the sin problem. And as far as our obedience, our obedience never made us right with God. Our obedience to good works, to, to the law, or to doing anything right. The, the obedience, really, that the Bible talks about is being obedient to the gospel. And that simply means believing. <laughs> it just simply means believing the truth of what Christ has already done for us. And so bottom line, our behavior 
our obedience, our disobedience, our good works, our bad works, our law keeping, our not keeping the law, however you want to word it, however you want to <laughs> look at it, none of that has anything to do with God cursing or blessing. Uh, but really, as you say, all the blessing has already taken place, and we simply get to live in it. We get to live in it every single day of our lives. Well, it's exciting. You know, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, Paul said in, in Galatians. And I used to hear that over and over again in a particular dogma that uh, I had been brought up in. I'm not saying it was it was bad, but there was sort of a different light on it than, than what I see now. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law because he became a curse for us. For it is written, uh, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, uh, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And so everything that is good comes from God, and it's already been provided to us uh, through Christ. And look, Joel, I, I can't learn how to love somebody the way God does until I can understand at least somewhat his love for me. Once I begin to understand what his true love for me is, then I can, in turn, release that to others. I can't experience the blessing of his righteousness until I learn and understand that he has made me righteous. It's hard for me to live in that if I don't have knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. And the list goes on. There are so many other things out there, I think, spiritually, emotionally, and yes, physically, that God has provided for us through the cross that we're just probably not even aware of yet. Yeah, and if and if I'm continuously living with the mindset that when I mess up, when I sin, then I lose fellowship with God or God is cursing me somehow or the bad things that are happening in my life are because I've committed some sin or sins. If I continually live with that mindset, then I it's I'm going to have a much harder time understanding the love of God and the fact that none of it is based upon my behavior. And, and that, that's why it's so important. Again, we you know, always are going to say this, that we need to get ourselves established, rooted deeply into that unconditional love of God. And the fact that he looks on us and is pleased with us as his beloved children because he does, just because he does, because he loves us. And because of that great love for us, he sent Christ to the cross. It, it, it wasn't even our behavior. It wasn't us thinking that we could do something great that made him send Christ to the cross. It was the very fact that he already loved us that he sent Christ to the cross to take care of the sin problem once and for all, forever and ever and ever. You never have a sin problem with God because Christ himself <laughs> has done away with it. And he's made you acceptable before God because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We have peace with God because of the blood of Jesus, and we can rest in that. And so, with the sin issue taken care of, what about living right? What about the way we live our lives in Christ? Is it our goal? Should it be our goal to strive to be holy? Should it be our goal to live righteously? <laughs> we'll talk about that next week, so I hope you'll join us for that right here on Growing in Grace. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.